Well, it's graduation season and I've attended homeschool co-op graduations and I just attended a public, large public high school graduation. And in both places, this issue came up. The public high school, the, the ceremony was pretty much led by the honor society students. They called the names. They were decorated in medals and cords and sashes. And they were all girls, all of them. There was not a man other than the, the board of education president who spoke on that stage. And the person I knew who's graduating is going into chemical engineering with over a 4.0 and all of this, you know, accomplishment in her belt. Uh, and then I attended a homeschool co-op graduation. There were obviously a much smaller amount of children, but, or graduates there. And even in that Christian circle, someone asked one of the female graduates what she was doing and her mom stepped in automatically and told this whole grand story about how you know she does she just is gonna stay put for this amount of time and and you know who knows what it'll she's just justifying this daughter wants to stay home and prepare herself for motherhood i know it I, it's written all of her, all over the way that she lives life. And even the family was having a really hard time justifying that. And I think we just face that so much. We say, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. And it, it, it's just not yeah. a just. <laughs> so <laughs> I've just that. seen that play out very tangibly lately. Yeah. I, I, I think it's actually really important to talk about graduation ceremonies. Uh, because I think graduation ceremonies are maybe the most, I think the most influential moment where we have a public ceremony where we tell young people the kind of the, the, the optimized or pr the proper trajectory of life. What is the purpose? Like that, that's the whole point of the ceremony. We're, we're celebrating what they've accomplished, but there's also an understanding that, that when, when there's speeches given or conversations had, it's sort of pointing children, right? men and women, boys and girls in a direction. I, I was, I was very struck on, I remember my high school, my high school graduation party, somebody pulled me aside and said, and told me, Hey, I, I got to tell you something, something that I think is really important that, you know, when you, you, you transition to this next season of your life, what you're about to experience when you go off to college, those are going to be the best years of your life. So enjoy it. And I was like, I was shocked. Like, and, and really grateful because I was like, oh, finally somebody told me really what the, like what peak life is all about. And then of course I experienced college life and I've experienced a lot of years since then. Now I look back on that and I would, I would take issue with that assessment that, that the absolute pinnacle of life is when you have the least responsibility, when you have the most ability to indulge your own impulsive desires, that is peak life. That is not biblical. We, we are told exactly when peak life happens from a kind of a life, the arc of a, of a life story from Psalm 128. And it is, is a grandfather and grandmother at, at a table with their children and grandchildren. It says specifically, behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Uh, it's not about, you know, your college years, but this story is really difficult. So there's a lot being stirred up. And I do think that you know, is, should there be gender, like a little bit more of a gender distinction conversation had at graduation ceremonies when you are pointing, are you going to point men and women in exact same direction when they are around 18 years old? Is that, is that an, is that an optimized message to give to, to men and women? I think our culture has said yes. April and I were just at a graduation ceremony a few days ago for one of our daughters who graduated our fourth. And, you know, one of the things I said to April is I, I looked over and I said, do you were, do you remember that when you graduated, did the, did the guys and gals wear different colors? And she said, yeah, they did. And, and I'm like, yeah, they did when I graduated too. But I don't see that anymore. Like it is kind of weird watching them because you know, they're, they're in, because of the hat and the robe, it's really hard to tell the difference between a guy and a gal, unless you're like, look really close. I don't think that's a big deal. I don't think it's like, oh my gosh, you know, stop everything. Something terrible has happened. 
it's just a it's just it's just an observation that we both were making and it's like when there's an opportunity to accentuate the difference we choose not to take it often and when there's an opportunity to blend the 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 two genders what we tend to take that road that's just that's a trajectory culture is on in general if you just look for it you'll see it in very subtle ways i think that's a very small and subtle way i don't think it's a big deal but it's it's some it's something interesting to note so april what are your thoughts i know that you saw that we had that conversation as as we went into the uh, uh through that graduation experience yeah it was very bizarre the i mean everyone looked the same from the stage, it was really, really hard to tell unless the girl had really long hair over her gown. It was very hard to tell. But also on the in the program, because this was kind of like a homeschool co-op uh, graduation, there were only 19 students. So they each kind of had like a paragraph on the program about all of their accomplishments throughout high school and then what their future plans are. And it was such a stark contrast, kind of like what Kristen's saying with uh, 18 of them talking about all of their accomplishments from high school and then they're heading off to college and then what their major is going to be and all these things. And I had asked Jeremy to write Elisa's, our daughter's little bio thing. And it starts off, Elisa is a beloved daughter of the prior family. <laughs> it's like calling out her, her like daughter identity. And then he talks about a few things, like she's an artist and some other things. And then at the very end, he's saying, you know, she's going to go off and do some mission work, and then she'll come back and help with the family businesses while she's preparing for motherhood. And uh, she read it, and we were joking. She's like reading through all of her friends. She's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, none of them, none of them say anything about family or getting married or being a mom or anything. And so she, I'm like, well, how does that make you feel? And she's just like, I, this is crazy. Like, I feel like, I forget the word she used, but like alone, but like not ashamed kind of like, I'm the only one, but this is, I'm not going to do what they're doing. That's for sure. So it's bizarre in the Christian world. I think how pervasive it is. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's a that is just not a, it's not appropriate to call that out. And I think, and this is a difficult topic because I think that what's happened. One of the reasons anyone listening to this who isn't really familiar with family teams is going to be like, this is incredibly um, dissonant from everything else I'm hearing. Not only in the secular world, but also in the Christian world. Like April said, everything that we just went through was a was not only Christian. It was like it was conservative homeschool Christian in, in the most dramatic kind of way. And and we stood out like a sore thumb, you know, in, in the way that we were kind of positioning what we thought this event was about and how we were kind of walking through this next season with our daughter. And so, yeah, it, it's it's difficult because I don't think that it's well known the uh, impact this is having on on the 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 ability for young women in particular to think about. And this is kind of getting back to what Zuby was basically saying that the, all the metrics are the same. Like, like you, you, when you get to this, this, when you look back at your kind of high school career, you look forward to college, what you want to see, I think culturally, what we want to see is that if you somehow erase the names at the top of both of those, you know, those transcripts or those bios, you would not be able to tell the gender. And that would be considered like a huge win. I think culturally, like I, I don't want to be able to know the gender when I'm looking at what you've accomplished and what you're aiming at in the future. And I think we're saying can we have a conversation about that? Is that a good idea? Like, is there is there a reason to actually potentially be able to tell the gender based on on that? And maybe maybe not make that the, the goal or make that make that an accomplishment. Are we taking a step forward or backwards instead of forward?